Ellis Island officially opened its doors to immigrants from all over the world on January 1st, 1892. During the 62-year history of Ellis Island, an estimated 12 million immigrants passed through in search of a better life in the United States. The vast majority of these immigrants came from Europe, with significant numbers from Italy, Ireland, Germany, and Poland. However, immigrants from Asia, Africa, and South America also arrived in the United States through Ellis Island. Interestingly, it was used as a military training ground and a quarantine station in addition to being an immigration station. During World War II, the island was used as a detention center for enemy aliens as well as a holding facility for German prisoners of war. Following the war, the island housed refugees from Europe as well as other parts of the world. Ellis Island sits in the sparkling waters of New York Harbor. It's 27 and a half acres of land seemingly floating on the surface like a mirage. Its size has changed slightly over time due to land reclamation projects as well as other shoreline changes. Ellis Island was named after Samuel Ellis, a merchant and landowner from New York who owned the island in the late 1800s. He is thought to have inherited the island from his father, who bought it from the state of New York in the 1770s. Following Ellis's death, the island changed hands several times, and it was used for a variety of purposes, including farming, military training, and, as we said, quarantine. In 1808, the federal government paid $10,000 for Ellis Island as part of an effort to strengthen the country's coastal defenses. The main building on the island, known as the Great Hall, is the largest immigrant processing center ever built. It spanned over 300 feet in length and covered over 27,000 square feet. It was built in 1900 in the Romanesque Revival style by the architectural firm Boring and Tilton, and it was made of brick and stone. It had a central barrel vaulted skylight that ran the length of the building and was supported by a series of arches that rose all the way to the upper level. The building's exterior was embellished with decorative elements such as arched windows, cornices, and belt courses, and the roof was embellished with a series of dormers. The Great Hall was a breathtaking space, its high ceiling supported by these grand arches and dotted with skylights that let in beams of light. Murals and intricate carvings adorned the walls, and the floor was a gleaming expanse of marble, cooled to the touch and smooth underfoot. It was divided into two levels, with the inspection stations in the upper level and the public waiting area on the lower level. The Great Hall, the heart of the Immigration Processing Center, was a vast open space that could accommodate hundreds of people at a time. When immigrants arrived at Ellis Island, they were subjected to a series of medical and legal screenings to ensure that they were fit to enter the country. These inspections could be quite stringent, and many immigrants were denied entry due to illness or other issues. Despite its difficulties, Ellis Island symbolized hope and opportunity for millions of immigrants. Those who passed inspection were allowed to enter the United States saw Ellis Island as the first stop on their journey to the brand new life. When Ellis Island was open, it had two boat docks. The main dock, known as the South Ferry Quay, it was on the island's southern end, and it was used by the majority of the ferries and boats that brought immigrants to the island. The north dock, which was located on the northern end of the island, was used by smaller boats and vessels. Both docks were outfitted, though, with gangways and other amenities to help people and cargo move between the boats and the island. Despite its reputation as a primary port of entry for immigrants, Ellis Island was not the only one in operation at the time. Other ports of entry included Baltimore, Boston, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. Here's an interesting fact. Records from the early years of the immigration station have been lost. It's unknown who the first person was to pass through Ellis Island. However, we do know that in 1933, Albert Einstein arrived in the United States via Ellis Island. 
Einstein was a physicist who fled Nazi Germany because of his Jewish ancestry and involvement in the pacifist movement. His wife, Elsa, and their son, Hans Albert, accompanied him to Ellis Island. Einstein would go on to become one of the world's most famous scientists, best known for his contributions to the theory of relativity and photoelectric effects, among many, many others. Enrico Fermi, an Italian-American physicist known as the architect of the nuclear reactor, arrived in the United States with his family in 1938 via Ellis Island. His work on nuclear fission is best known for laying the groundwork for the development of the nuclear energy as well as the atomic bomb. Other notable celebrities that immigrated through Ellis Island were Andrew Carnegie, George Gershwin, Irving Berlin, Charlie Chaplin, Bob Hope, Lucille Ball, Milton Berle, Leonard Bernstein, and many, many more. Until 1954, Ellis Island remained open as that primary immigration station to the United States until it finally closed its doors. It had been left alone for many, many years before it was fixed up and turned into a museum in the 1980s. And today, Ellis Island is a national monument and museum. It's a powerful symbol of America's promise as a nation of welcome and possibility with fairness, integrity, and respect for all. These are interesting things with JC.